Hey, John, it's Fuji Film. Um, I got your number, so call me back when you get a chance. I wanted to pick your brain. I hope you're doing great. Talk to you soon. Hello my friend and welcome back to another video here at the picnic table. And no, the title is not clickbait. These are actually my first impressions from real world use with the X-H2S from Fujifilm. I'm not sure if that cold intro made any sense to you, but basically Fujifilm contacted me because they wanted to work with me for the upcoming launch, now current launch of the Fujifilm X-H2S, and I was really thrilled about this. I wanna make a separate video detailing the story behind that and the process of working on this project with them. It was really amazing from start to finish, uh, and I'm really excited about what's to come. However, I'll make clarifications probably in that video, uh, but I will make sure in this video to provide a disclaimer about what exactly that means for this video. The first disclaimer is that in no way am I now a Fuji ambassador or representative in any formal capacity or informal capacity. I was hired as a contractor to work with them to produce content for this launch. And you'll see it over on their channel and in their media outlets, you know, wherever you can find Fujifilm, you should end up seeing some of the content that I produced and some of the content that was produced about me producing content. And it would mean the world to me if you went and supported and uh, said hello. Just go drop a comment on any of that content that comes out and let them know that you support me as well. That would mean the world to me. So having said that, none of what I'm going to share here nor what I'm going to share in the future will be influenced in any way by a formal or informal contract to only say positive things or anything along those lines. I'm just going to share with you my experience with the camera from using it in this particular use case and environment. And that's something I want to say too, is that this is just impressions. These are impressions from one project that I got to work on. I had the camera for a total of two full days in my hands for use. And it's going to be impressions. This is, this is not a full review, though I intend on making one because I'm really excited about this camera. But this is just impressions. So please know that this was a pre-release model. So this is not the final model my impressions come from. This is not the one that's going to get shipped to everyone. Uh, this is the model that I was using for this particular project. So I think those are all of my disclaimers. I think my bases are covered there. And we'll just go ahead and dive into the video because I know you're anxious to get it started. The shortest version is this. It's an incredible camera that punches well above its price tag. I can't believe that we are getting these specs and this user experience in this price point. I, I'm really shocked by that. I was shocked by that with the X-T3 when I first bought it. This was my first ever Fujifilm camera. And then I was shocked by it with the X-T4. And now once again, here I am blown away by what we as creators are getting at the price that we're getting it. It is to me really unbelievable. And not just from a specs perspective because any camera company could produce specs and sell it at a reasonable price that that is its own conversation but this is to me a question of user experience in addition to specs and that's what in my opinion fujifilm has always exceeded at and i'm really really excited that they stayed true to that identity in the xh2s so that's the shortest possible review that i could give and i really mean it 
I'll go ahead and start diving into some of the specifics of my impressions. And the first one that comes to mind is that, I'm sorry for a quick interruption here, but I have to tell you about my new LUTs that are coming out. Down in the description right now, you can actually go input your email and get a free two pack of the LUTs that are coming out just to try them out and see what you think. It is a Rec 709 pack as well as a F-Log pack that are gonna be coming. And so you'll get one of each of those and it's built for film simulations is the Rec 709 and the F-Log is just log in general, but it works best for F-Log of course. And so go download those, try those out. And also for all of you Big Sur series LUT users, there is an update coming for that. So if you haven't gone and given me your email address, please go do that. Sign up in my website for the newsletter because I'm gonna be updating that. And if you have already bought it, then you get the update for free. So please make sure that you go do that. Go get the free LUTs as well. Just two of them, but still, I think it'll give you a good sample of what's to come. That's all for this interruption. I'll let you get back to the video. The first one that comes to mind is that if you've seen the X-H1, then you're going to be familiar with the X-H2S. My point in that is that it's not the traditional styling of the vintage Fuji lines of cameras. And we all know that Fuji takes one sensor oftentimes and expands it into a multitude of cameras in different stylings and for different people so that they are shaped and formed on purpose to the user experience that might suit people doing different kinds of work. And the XH line is the professional level APS-C line that comes out of Fujifilm. And that's not to say that none of the other cameras are professional, but the XH2 isn't going to have some of those vintage aesthetics because it is meant to be a workhorse of a camera. And let me tell you that I loved holding it. Right off the bat, that is probably one of the first things that I noticed is that these cameras, because they come for a specific style and a look and the aesthetic is a part of the process here, I do find that they suffer ergonomically. And I don't think I'm the only one who's ever noted that before. I know for a fact that I'm not. And the X-H2 stays lightweight while adding the ergonomics of a bit of a beefier body to hold. And I loved it. It fit in my bag pretty much the same way that my X-T4 does. So it's not drastically larger and yet it feels significantly more comfortable to hold and to use. So right away, the visual styling as well as the ergonomics and the, you know, the physical experience of looking at the camera is different than Fujifilm uh, in their other bodies, but the H1 is right on par with the H2 in terms of the physical look and the feel and everything. And so if you've ever seen one or held one of those cameras, then you know, and I will just say that already I like the way that it feels in the hand and I liked using it. All right, now we get to the insides of the camera, which I know is probably what you are most excited to hear about. And I'll just come out of the gate and say the things that really stood out to me is that 6K in three by two open gate is super fun. I'm really, really glad that they did it, even though I'm not a huge like resolution person. I don't do a lot of interviews where I have to punch and rearrange. I don't record a lot of full length wedding ceremonies, even though I do a lot of wedding videography. So the whole benefit of like punching and reframing, things like that, that's cool to me, it is beneficial, but really I think what I came to love so much about it was the three by two open gate and being able to have the extra vertical resolution so that I could just reframe in that direction. And of course, when you downscale for a 4K video from 6K, you end up with really, really sharp and beautiful footage. I really enjoyed using the 6K three by two open gate. It was awesome and that was one of the first things that I noticed. Then the next thing was the ProRes. And I'm really curious to find out how it fits into my real workflow and whether or not I'll end up using it all the time. I'm not sure, but I really enjoyed having ProRes. And in my opinion, having ProRes inside of the X-H2S is going to be a game changer for a lot of professionals who want high-end video in this 
price range with Fuji's user experience. Seriously, there's just not enough I could say about how amazing it is that we have ProRes. But that does carry me into one of the negative points, I guess you could say. And that is just that the CF Express Type B cards, I think I'm getting that right, but they are a little pricey. And quite frankly, for me as an independent videographer, that is a little higher than I would like to pay. Uh, but I know that I have to have that in order to get the ProRes internally. So honestly, you know, you just have to make your choices there. Uh, I'm okay with it in the end. I'm okay with paying a little extra for the cards. I do like them, them feeling more robust. I know that that's silly, but yeah, I feel good about having the CF Express Type B cards as well as the SD cards. I will be curious to test more fully uh, what modes can you dual record because that's a really important feature to me as a wedding filmmaker is dual recording with cards internally. I just feel really safe having the redundancy. I'll be interested to find out what modes can record dual internally because of course you have to keep up with the SD card. Uh, so I'm not sure if ProRes will be possible. I guess I will find out alongside the rest of you. Now the next thing I noticed is that the 4K 120 is beautiful. It is seriously gorgeous. There are It doesn't seem like there are any shortcuts taken to get 4K 120. I know sometimes there has to be pixel binning, but this is beautiful high res 4K 120. And I don't use 120 a ton for wedding filmmaking. I tend to just go with 60 frames per second. And of course, the 4K 60 is really, really beautiful. But anyway, the 4K 120 gets me really excited to use it for other projects. And I'll be interested to find out where I go with that because I haven't even leaned into 120 for a long time because I love my Fuji cameras and they only do 120 in HD. So I've kind of avoided it a little bit. Again, to a slightly negative point, and I you know, put air quotes around that, but I wish that we had 120p with sound. Uh, so it is recorded at 5x at 24 frames per second or whatever frame rate you choose, but it's pre-slowed down so it comes in conformed to a 24p timeline basically. And I do wish that there was audio option available in 120p. I don't know if that's possible somewhere down the line. I'm really not sure, but it would be nice if I could record in 120 at 120 FPS and have audio come in with it. Again, that's a wish list item. It's hardly a negative in this impressions video, but if I could have it anyway, that would be awesome. Unfortunately, what you're all probably wanting to know about, I don't have any information about, and that is how much better is the autofocus? Does it overheat? Does it have overheating issues? Is the IBIS significantly improved? And I don't know what other hot topics there are that you all want to know about. So comment below on those controversial things, uh, and I'll try to make a video about that as soon as I have a unit in my hands. But I really can't speak to those things. I did shoot handheld the whole time with the 16 to 55 for the most part. And I don't see any IBIS artifacts or wobbling or warping in my footage. I was shooting on the Oregon coast and it was uh, somewhat rainy and I didn't experience any overheating of course. So I can't speak to that. And the autofocus seemed pretty reliable for me. Uh, but then again, I've not really had issues with my X-T3 and my X-T4. And I think that's partly just based on my shooting style. But with the 16 to 55 and the X-H2S, I didn't have any noteworthy autofocus problems. And again, that was a pre-release unit. But going backwards actually real quick to the overheating and actually where I was shooting, it was raining in Oregon. and. I took this camera into the elements and it was a pre-release unit so I did want to be really careful with it but I couldn't really avoid or 
you know, just not use the camera. And so I did need to use it. And the environment that I was in was pretty wet and everything held up great. So I can speak to a little bit of the weather conditioning and, and using it in a wet environment and it held up. Low light performance would probably be one of those last items on the you know, controversial sort of list. And I didn't get to test it again. Uh, I don't really know. I, I wish that I had it in my hands for longer, but eventually I will. And then I will let you know, I'm going to try to make a video dedicated to only the controversial kind of topics because I know that everyone wants to know about it and it's really helpful for me when other camera reviewers make those kinds of videos. Wow, I just had a moment off the camera where I can't believe I forgot to mention the full size HDMI yet. I'm so excited. Full size HDMI just should be a common requirement at this point. The micro HDMI stuff, I wish camera manufacturers would just stop messing around with that. It is awful. It, I just, for a video camera specifically, it's so small. And a lot of people could probably wish for SDI, but HDMI is where we're at. And we got a full size HDMI in this camera. I'm stoked. I don't even use external monitors that often or recorders or anything. And yet when I do, or if I need to, now I don't have to fidget with the micro or the mini HDMI or whatever it is, full size HDMI. I'm so stoked. The next thing on my list was F-Log 2. I'm really excited. I don't use F-Log all the time. This is well documented on my channel. I love classic Chrome. I am recording this video in F-Log and I did use F-Log on the X-H2S with my short time using it. And it was as beautiful as the F-Log on the X-T4, on the X-T3, on all their other cameras. And especially now having more data, ProRes, having 10-bit 422 internally recorded in ProRes, we've got a lot of data to work with. And so F-Log is so much more friendly in that sense now with the X-H2S, and now they've expanded it to F-Log 2, and it is beautiful. You do get a little extra dynamic range, which is super exciting because, in my opinion, Fuji is already somehow competing with the likes of you know, Canon cinema cameras in terms of the functional dynamic range, maybe not a test measurement sort of thing, but the functional dynamic range in my experience and in the experience of people who have commented on my past videos, you can go read those comments. Fuji has incredible dynamic range and for me to see them add F-Log2 as well as ProRes internal recording with all that data I mean, it's pretty incredible and I can't wait to get my hands on uh, a camera so that I can see more about just how much that makes an improvement. But for now, I do have some F-Log2 footage, not much, but anyway, I can see that there is an improvement there and I'm really excited. And to finish off my first impressions, here is one of the craziest parts about what this camera is and its price point and its video features is that this is a legit hybrid camera. I am not a photographer by trade. I, I like photography, but it's not my main thing. So I took some images on it, but I didn't even get to touch the photo specs and just what it's capable of in terms of the image quality and also the user experience from the photo side. But this is a legit hybrid camera that has insane stills capabilities. And again, I've literally not touched any of that. I've talked this whole time about its video features and my experience with video, but this thing is an insane photo camera as well. Anyway, that's just one of the last things that I have to touch on here is just how mind blowing it is to me that the X-H2S is also a hybrid camera. This is not just a videographer's camera. Just wanted to say that to to wrap up these first impressions. Thank you for sticking around for my rambles, but that's all that I have for this real world first impressions X-H2S video. I hope that it was helpful for you. And if it wasn't, let me know in the comments. I would love to help you out. And just let me know what you think. Are you gonna pick this up right away? Is it a little bit too expensive still and you wanna wait? Or do you just wanna wait to see other real world results from it? My long-term review, hopefully, 
will come out before too long uh, with the camera in my hands because I have a lot of plans to use it. So yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I really appreciate you watching. I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks so much.